Welcome to Kingdom Expansion with your host, Apostle Michelle Allen, where God is expanding your tent for influence and impact in the earth. Apostle Michelle Allen has an international ministry where she ministers to the broken, the wounded, the destitute, and the hungry, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of souls, bringing them to a relationship with the Lord himself and bringing glory and honor to the kingdom of heaven. Now, here's your host. Welcome to Kingdom Expansion. I'm your host, Apostle Michelle Allen. I am off location today, but I still wanted to come forth and give you a word from God. We're still talking about the process. The reason why we continue to talk about the process is because the process of our growth, the process of getting to our predestined purpose, the process of making it to our destiny is very important in our walk as a believer. And again, I'm just going to recap what I spoke about last week before I get to the end of the lesson. We talked about purpose, and the definition of purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Amen. There is a specific purpose for which you exist. There is something that God preordained and predestined for you to accomplish in the earth realm. And he knew it before the annals of time, what he will call you forth to do. And inside of you, in the very essence of your being, he put everything in you that you would need, the gifts, the anointing, the calling that you would have or be necessary for you to perform what he created you to do. The next thing that we talked about was predestined. We understand yeah. that we have pre, we were predestined to do great things, great works in the kingdom. Jesus told his disciples that I must go so that you, whenever you ask the Father to do whatever it is that you need him to do in my name, he would do it unto you. He said, but I must go. Amen. He said, but greater works will you do. Amen. Because I go to the Father. And so we understand that there is something great. There is a great gift. There is a great burden. There is a great assignment. The mandate and the mantle that is upon each and every one of your lives is powerful and it is to accomplish something great in the earth for the kingdom of God. No matter how big, no matter how small, no matter how massive, you may think that it is. What is in you is greater than the difficulty, the adversity, or whatever that will come to hinder or try to sabotage you performing what God has called you forth to do. When God has already released the seed of the word, listen, the word that God has released, it must not and it can not return unto him void. It has to accomplish what he sent it forth to do in the earth realm. And so that's a good thing for you and for I, because we understand that if God be for us, he is more than the world against us. And no matter how many circumstances and situations come our way to try to cause us to be defeated, to be hindered, and the thing that God has for us to do, it will not prosper against us because what God has placed on the inside of us, it must come to pass. It has to speak. Amen. And it will not lie. It cannot return unto him void. Glory to God. But it must accomplish what he sent it forth to accomplish. Because God has a plan, a predestined plan. There is a predestined assigned purpose that must come forth in the earth realm. And God is capable of bringing it to pass. Amen. In your life. And so we talked about David. We talked about David and his purpose and his assignment. We talked about him being anointed as king over the children of Israel. We talked about Saul, who was the the present king, but who God had taken his anointing off of because Saul was disobedient to the word of God. And so now we have this little shepherd boy named David that has been anointed to be king, but he goes back out to the flock and he goes back out to shepherd the sheep of his father. But now we, we've come to a place and we've passed where Saul, King Saul, has asked for David. And so David now has been going back and forth into the kingdom to be with King Saul and then back to be with his father. 
But his older siblings, his brothers, were in the military with Saul. And so what we found out is that now David was on assignment from his father to go back into the, the field where the armies were, where his brothers were, to take them some rations, to take them some supplies, and, and to bring back word to the father about what was do, going on and how his sons were doing, how his brothers were doing. But David comes upon the camp. And when he gets to the camp, he hears that there is this giant named Goliath that is taunting the armies of God, that is taunting the believers of God, that's taunting them and has them so fearful and afraid that they don't even want to go against Goliath, amen, to fight him. And David begins to now be in a position because because of the assignment of his father, he has now been put in the time and the place to birth his assignment. Glory to God. And we talked about the time and place for your birthing. We talked about the appointment that now God has ordained for David to, to settle in. And that was the time and the place for David to come into that position where he understands that there is something greater in him. There is something mightier in him that has caused him to meet that time, to meet that place where he will be birthed out into the next level of of his destiny. Glory to God. There are many levels to your destiny. There are many assignments that you have to complete before you even make it to your destined place of completion. And as you are growing and developing, there are levels and levels and levels that we must complete in our faith, in our character development, in our walk with God, in the giftings being opened and the giftings being manifest in our lives so that we can truly come to a place where we can not only defend defeat the thing that God has called us to defeat, but we can overcome even the issues and the circumstances of life. Amen. With peace, with joy, and with faith. Glory to God. And so David was put in a position where he would be able to hear the ridicule of the giant but he was also in a position to where he had to face the adversity and the rejection Amen. That came from his brothers because his brothers like, why are you here? When David began to speak against the giant, we talked about this number two position to win over that thing. You have been positioned to win over that thing. Whatever that thing is in your life that will cause you to be hindered, that will cause you to be sabotaged. And it might be fear. It might be your fear of being rejected. It might be anxiety. Just the fact that you feel like you can't accomplish this thing that God has given you to do. It might be that you are uh, are fear of being misunderstood or, or that there may be some things in your life that are holding you hostage, a poverty mindset. You might be battling with doubt. You might be battling with guilt or shame from the things that you've done in your past and you feel like God cannot use you. But I'm going to tell you that the devil is a liar. God positions you to face those difficulties, to face those adversities, to deal with those strongholds, that those walls can begin to come down, that you would defeat those things through faith and your trust in God so that you can move forward. So those things can no longer hinder you. Those things can no longer sabotage you, but so that you can be healed and you can move forward and progress in the things of God. David was able to stand in that place, even though his brother says, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Go back home. You don't have any right being here. You don't have any right to say anything. You just need to go away. Why you just, you're just so prideful. They thought he was being prideful in his own self, in his own strength, in his own ability. But David had had experience with God and he understood that because God had given him the ability, the supernatural strength, the supernatural faith and the ability to overcome lions, bears, and tigers, and wolves that have tried to run off with the sheep. He knew and he was understood the faithfulness of God. And he said, if God can cause me to deliver the sheep or the lambs out of a lion's mouth or out of a bear or out of the wolf's mouth, then he can give me the strength that I need to overtake this rejection from my brothers, to overtake this rejection and this 
this ridicule and this fear that this giant is trying to bring upon these people in the name of Jesus. He can give me that power to overcome them. And so David was in a position. He had been positioned because he was in the right time at the right place to, to be birthed into the next level of his ministry, that his gifts, his anointing, the mantle that he carried, even after the hands had been laid on him, even after the oil had been poured over his head, there was still a working, an inner working that needed to happen in order to bring to pass the thing that God has spoken over him. He was not yet king. He was not yet mature enough. He was not yet walking in the ability. He was only a shepherd boy. But God was putting in him in the time and the place for him to be birthed into the next level. God even positioned him under the authority and the mentorship of a king that God had taken his hand off of so that David can learn the right way and the wrong way. He can know what to do and what not to do. He can stay humble in the midst of adversity, trial, and tribulation, and still trust in the power and the saving grace of the Almighty God. And so he was positioned in a place so he can win over. Because even in the even in the the position where he was under Saul, Saul began to feel some kind of way about David because the people began to sing David's praises. They began to sing about David's might and how he would win all these battles later on, that he would win all these battles. Saul has killed his thousands. David has killed his ten thousands and Saul began to be jealous and envious of David but David still had to stand his position to get what it was that he needed to receive from God so that he can continue to grow and mature and be able to overcome those things that will come against him emotionally mentally and spiritually so that he can stand in his position as king and fight the physical natural enemy that will come against him so Number three, I want to get to number three today. Number three is overcoming with faith and experience. David had experience. Amen. And so this is what the scripture says in, in number three, overcoming faith and with faith and experience. The men of Israel said, have you seen this man who is coming up? Surely he is coming up to defy Israel. The king will reward the man who kills him with riches and will give him his daughter in marriage and make his father's house, family tree, free from taxes and service in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him, what will be done for the man who killed this Philistine and removes the disgrace of his taunting from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he has taunted and defiled the armies of the living God? The men told him, that is what will be done for the man who kills him. David was positioned in his time and he was put in time and position, the appointed time for God to birth something great out of him, birth that leadership out of him, birth the kingship out of him. David was also put in a position where he could win over the thing that caused him to be hindered and sabotaged in his purpose in God. And he won over the thing, amen, that was there to cause him to fear and to flee and to cause him to not understand his purpose in God or not even walk in faith. And now he was in the position where he will overcome with faith and experience everything that was set before him to distract him, to derail him off of his path of trajectory. And so David got in his mind and his understanding. He said, wait a minute, this uncircumcised Philistine, who does this person think they are that they will defile the armies of the living God? I am not going to stand for this. I'm going to stand for righteousness. I'm going to stand in peace. I'm going to stand in strength. And my experience that I have with 
with God. God has caused me to triumph over all of my enemies. And if God can cause me to triumph over all of my enemies, and he will cause me to defeat my enemies with my hands, then I know that this uncircumcised Philistine is nobody different, is nothing different than what God has already given me victory over. Glory to God. And so David reflected on his experience with God. And some of you today, you need to reflect on the faithfulness of God, the experiences that you've had with him that has caused you to triumph over your enemies, that has caused you to triumph over your adversaries. You need to reflect on how good God has been in your life and how faithful and true he has been to give you victory over every work of the adversary in your life. It might have been your physical health and you might have thought that that thing was going to take you out. You might have thought that you would never recover, but God gave you mercy. God restored your body. He restored your mind. He restored your health, and he gave you strength, and you were able to raise up out of your sick bed. You were able to stand up and be and position yourself in the face of adversity, in the face of fear in the face of doubt and still triumph over your enemies. When you lost your job, you didn't know how you were gonna make it, but God was faithful. He opened doors for you and made ways for you. God provided for you. You were in a place where you thought your children were going to perish. They were going to be strung out out there in the world with, with uh, uh, on addictions and, and just li riotous living. But God brought your children back home through your faith and through your seeking the Lord and trusting in him. And God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to what? The power that works in you. So have faith. You can overcome every adversity with faith and you can experience and continue to experience the winning and the victory in God. Number four, overcoming through fa their failure to see your value, overcoming their failure to see your value. David was in a position because now we find that when Eliab, his older brother, heard what David had said to the men, Eliab got angry and he burned with anger against David and he asked David why are you here why have you come down here with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness and I know your presumption he said listen you come down here to make a name for yourself you come down here to be noticed so that you can gain notoriety but you're nothing but a little shepherd boy where are those little sheep those few sheep that you have to take care of who has them but David was prepared he left the sheep with a key Keeper. He left the supplies and the provision that he brought for his brothers with the supply keeper. And he positioned himself there with the armies to hear what the, the enemy was saying. And now he's in a position to hear what the armies were saying so that he can move to the next level in God. He was available to be used by God in that situation. But his brother, who was in fear and in doubt and did not trust God as David trusted God, got jealous and envious. And angry towards David because he was speaking up in faith. Amen. And so now, now we find the place. It says here that David responded to what he said. He said, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God. David is speaking now to King Saul because the king heard of this faith of this young boy who was down here and was not big enough or strong enough even to carry any armor on his body was not even in this in his group of soldiers, but he just came to visit his brothers and he's speaking with pride he's speaking with pride and faith in god and what god has already done what he has experienced from the father according to his faith and his own experiences and he listen he was able to stand even before his brother and able to wipe off his brother's own failure to see who he was the king that was on the inside the mighty warrior that was on the inside who tried to downplay his abilities who tried to downplay his value 
glory to God, in the kingdom, his value that he had to give according to his faith. Amen. And sometimes some people will try to write you off because they don't have value on what it is that you have to offer. But don't you worry and don't you fret. You stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord would open doors and make room for you. Just as he did for David, he opened the door and he made room for David to go before the king. Come on. And to allow the king to see the fierce faith that David had in the God that he served. And so Saul said to him, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight him for you are only a young man and he has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after it and attacked it and rescued the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it by its whiskers and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God. David let him know that the Lord had given him the strength to overcome the lion and the bear. The Lord had given him the wisdom to protect that which he had given him the assignment to keep. And because he had faith and because he had experience with God, he said this uncircumcised Philistine will be as the lion and the bear. He will be just like them because he is trying to come against the armies of the living God. You have to walk in your faith. When God opens the door for you to be before great men, you speak according to your faith. You speak according to your experience with God. And you give your resume that God has been faithful through the hills and the high water. God has been faithful when all hell has broken loose in your life. God has been faithful and he has caused you to overcome. You give your testimony of the goodness of God, the greatness of the Lord. And how he has given you strength in your time of weakness. How he has given you victory over your adversity. How you are no longer a victim, but you are a victor. That you are no longer a coward, but you are more than a conqueror. You have to allow the enemy to understand and know that your faith in God is greater than his taunts. Your faith in God and God's faithfulness towards you is greater than any trick, plot, scheme, or plan that he can bring against you. And because of that, you will birth your next level in him. You have to overcome the process in the process so that you can understand your purpose and your destiny has to be fulfilled. It will be manifest in the midst of your difficulty. It will be birthed out in the midst of your test and your trials. James says, count it all joy when you find yourselves in dire trials. And when you find yourself in dire situations, when you find yourself in adversity, when you find yourself in lack, when you find yourself in positions where you can't do anything for yourself, trust in the Lord. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and 1 that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Your faith in God in your times of testing and hardship will develop faithfulness. And when you are faithful over a few things, God says, I make you ruler over much. And so when God continues to put you in tests and bring you out of trials, he elevates you from level to level, from glory to glory, exalting you in the realm of the spirit and birthing your gifts, birthing your anointing, pulling on you the mantle that he has already preordained and predestined you to carry and to walk in before the annals of time because God has a plan and a purpose for your life and he will not allow it to die. He will not allow it to lay dormant, but he will bring it to pass. And it's going to take some pain, some suffering, and some difficulty to bring it to pass So trust in him through your times of pain and suffering because God has a purpose for your life. It is the process of getting you to your purpose and your destiny. And it shall 
come to pass. In the end, it shall speak and it will not lie. I pray that you have been encouraged today. And I want you to understand that if you desire to serve a seed, to sow a seed in order to help us to continue with this TV ministry, whether it be Women of Great Purpose or Kingdom Expansion, you can go to our website right now. And if this word has blessed you today, go to our website at www.krmi.webs.com dot com and click on the donate button and donate a seed now or to this ministry to help us to continue with the work and the preaching and the teaching of the gospel in Jesus name. Father, I thank you for everyone that is watching and viewing this broadcast today. I thank you, Father, that their eyes are open, that their ears are unstopped, that their heart is receptive, and that they have received your word today, that they are encouraged, empowered, and ignited to continue in the good fight of faith, to continue to walk out their kingdom purpose, and to seek your face for all that you have for them. Father, I thank you today that you are positioning them in the time in place for them to be birthed into their kingdom purpose at your appointed time. I thank you today, God, that you have positioned them to win over the thing that would hinder them, that you have given them victory over fear, victory over doubt, victory over confusion, victory over rejection, victory over abandonment, victory over generational curses, victory over everything that tried to hinder them and sabotage them according to your perfect will and desire. You have caused them to be victorious. I thank you today that you've caused them to overcome other people's opinions, their preconceived notions, their ideas that they have according to what they think that they should be and what they're capable of doing. I thank you that they are overcoming with faith and experience because you have been faithful and you have caused them to be victor, victorious over their giants in their life. I thank you today, Father, that Lord God, you have already overcome cause them to overcome other people's failure to see their value and that Lord God you will position them in a place that their glory the glory that you have placed upon them will be revealed and that Lord God they will be utilized for the upbuilding of your kingdom they will be utilized Lord God in their gifts and their assignment father to do great things in the earth realm for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus father I bind the hand of the enemy that will come to distract that will come to sabotage that will come to hinder and that will come to cause fear in their lives today in the mighty name of Jesus I bind the spirit of pain of rejection and abandonment from their past I bind the spirit of hurt father that they have experienced in the church or even with leaders oh God and Lord God I thank you today for healing their hearts healing their minds restoring their faith and strengthening them supernaturally by your spirit oh God that they will continue to fight the good fight of faith and that Lord God they will birth out what you have assigned for them to do in the earth realm. I thank you for giving them ferocious faith. I thank you for giving them resilience. I thank you for giving them long suffering. I thank you, Father, for birthing forgiveness in their heart, that they will cut loose of everything that will hinder and sabotage them from moving forward in you. And they will grow, Father, deep in you, and they will become more as you are in the earth, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for doing it right now. I give you glory. I give you honor and I give you praise in Jesus mighty name amen and amen listen I love you all with the love of Jesus and I will see you next time right here on the cross tv network amen with women of great purpose and kingdom expansion God bless you